Yeah. Who's undecided? Who has never barbecued before? Everyone's barbecued. Oh, no, there's a hand over there. Um, also, we'll talk a little bit about the Australian shuffle at a barbecue too. Uh, folks around the barbecue will explain the hierarchy system. I left that there for a little while. Okay, so two choices we've got today. We've got a um, charcoal fire one, and this is a beast of a barbecue. This is really the high end. Um, really good piece of kit earlier, and uh, Dr. Barbecue, uh, which demonstrating it earlier. Oh, Steve, uh, Steve Collins in the crowd now. Uh, uh, it's a, an excellent piece of kit. It's proper heavy duty. You can't just bring it out of the garage and wheel it onto the decking. It's, it's pretty much a standard place. Uh, and this one can stay light if it's on full blast for five hours. If it's on low, about, is it 24 hours, something like that? It can go for a while. 20, 20 hours, 20, just 20. So. so you can do a nice long slow cooks. We're also going to use a, a little gas powered one, um, which has got our friend uh, Marco Pierre White's name on the front. He has quite a few things nowadays. Um, stock cubes, you might have seen. Um, and I'll get this over and done with. I'm not bitter or anything, but if someone came to me and said, I'll give you three and a half million quid to sell some stock cube. I'll be there. I'm not a greedy man. I'd probably settle for a million for a stock of with my name to it. I mean, you know, everyone's got their price. Um, so we're going to use that um, to do the, uh, the sausage so we can control that nice long slow cook. I want this one to blast the steak to give it a really good, uh, really good hint of flavour. Now, the barbecue sauces, and you can use these as marinades, but you can also use them as a sauce straight on. My recommendation is if you're going to cook it for a long amount of time, don't stick your barbecue sauce on first of all. The sugar content in them is quite high. When sugar gets hot, it caramelizes. You can call it oven kissed, um, but it is burnt a lot of the time. So, so really, do be careful with it. So stick this on towards the end of it. Um, so it's rustic as well. Rustic, oven kissed, all these expressions should be part of your barbecue repertoire. Um, so that you have, I wouldn't say excuses, but always explain the reasons behind um, something being like it is. If you say, if you go to someone and go, I cooked that, and it's not quite how I wanted it, but it's edible. And they're like, really? And you'll go eat it, and you'll go, ooh, that's interesting. You do not want the words interesting used about your food. Uh, or different as well, that's another one. So, but if you do it, you go, oh, I tried, I tried charring it a little bit more to get the flavor to really come out. And they go, oh, well, yeah, excellent. So, later on, <laughs> I should, probably shouldn't have told you that first time, uh, because I run out of excuses for when my food gets served. So uh, never mind, we'll see how it goes. So this one here, we're going to um, start off the bobos. We're going to skewer it to make sure it doesn't um, misshapen or fall apart. Also, how many of you prick the sausages before you put them on to barbecue or cook them? How many? Do you do? Some do? Um, ideally, you shouldn't. Um, because a lot of the, the fat comes out, yes, which is a good thing, I guess, but it flames and it burns. Whereas if you keep, if you don't brick it, all the juices stay in there as well. It stays much more tender. Um, but that's just my take on it. You often find chefs believe they are 100% right on everything. There is no other way. This is the only way that you can cook it. Um, however, there are many ways to cook it. So. Um, it's up to you how you want to do it, but you may see the odd celebrity chef on TV saying that you cannot cook it any other way. And I will not do my French accent and, uh, and say that uh, this is how it should be. Um, there's another impression I do, it doesn't involve an accent, it goes like this as well. Uh, so whenever you do anything, especially sprinkling, that's the key. Um, right, so do sausage through the centre with the skewer. Try and get every single rung through there. Over just to make sure it goes through the whole lot. Like that. And another few just to secure it. And always think about the order that you're going to cook things in as well. Um, often you find people putting on the, ch they're worried about the chicken um, being sort of um, undercooked. So that'll go on for everything else. It's kind of tough and dry. And so have a little plan in your head. It's meant to be fun food as well. Um, the guys over there taking it very seriously. You've been over and seen the barbecue competition as well. Very serious about their food. Very, very serious. Okay, a couple more skewers. Through the centre. And we're ready to go onto the, uh, onto the barbecue. So as you can see, it's completely held together now. 
you don't have to buy a burwurst, you could buy, go to your local butcher and say, I want a, sort of like a, a meter of sausage or something like that, but don't crimp it, because all they've done in the butchers is they this came out of the machine, and they just simply twisted it to form it into a sausage. So ask them not to do that, and you can do something like this. It's quite a nice one for dinner parties, things like that. Something a bit special. Then, get it nice and hot. I don't want to over sort of brown the outside. Uh, there's a, a chap called Gordon, I don't know whether you heard of him, he does a bit of cooking on TV. Um, his famous expression is, brown is cooked, black is, is the F word quite a lot. Um, so we're hopefully going to go for nice and brown on there. Uh, this particular barbecue works with the, uh, with the lid down. Um, always quite useful, then you can hide anything from your guests that might be under there. Uh, distract them and then take the burnt bits out and recook something else. Not that that's going to happen today. 